<laughs> well, here we go, part three. I hope I hope you enjoyed this because it, these are, to me, these are funny stories uh, that just happened all in a very short time while while I was at the University of Miami. Now, this guy who went by the name of Moonbeam. Now, now, uh, people, you, you're just not gonna. You're just not going to understand uh, understand this uh, really because of two things. One, this guy was a multi multi and a few multi millionaire, and he lived in a in a, a huge boat off of Cook off, off of Coconut Grove Park, and he had this uh, lamb right here. That he called. Uh, well, first of all, he he was the the heir to the S and H green stamp fortune. Now, people, you're all going to shake your head, and, except the people that are my age, and say, "What the hell is S and H green stamps?" Well, when you used to go to a grocery store and you'd buy stuff, uh, or you go to other stores, they'd give you stamps, S and H green stamps, as a little bonus. Then they'd fill up booklets of them, and when you had enough booklets of them, you'd go to a redemption center, and you could get, with the books, you could buy a lamp or a toaster or shit like that, you know. It was like a, a little bonus, like a, a payback, like you might get on some credit cards or something today. But you had a, a actual place, redemption center. We hadn't had one in Vineland. Uh, but he was the heir to this. Uh, his father died and left him this great fortune. So he bought a boat and went out on the road. Now, he was very, uh, very in tune with the musicians, and he knew every musician. When, and no matter who came to Miami, they'd always end up, whether it was uh, Canned Heat, Black Sabbath, Santana, uh, Doobie Brothers, The Doors, you, never, you name it, they always ended up on his boat partying. So I get to, I got to meet the guy. Uh, yeah, I got to meet the guy. I met, got to meet the guy because... He wanted to come on campus. He was a big pusher of vegetarianism. And his lamb, which I just showed you a picture of, he'd have with him all the time. And you were supposed to call it sunshine if you were vegetarian, and you were supposed to call it lamb chops if you ate meat. And his, his he went by the moniker of Moonbeam. And he had a friend that, that called himself Star, and he was entirely... Uh, well, this guy always wore this black outfit, and and had a big cross on it, and and you can see him. He, he this is the Woodstock story. You can see him at Woodstock. Uh, he's in the he's in the movie movie, and he's at around. He goes to all the concerts he used to go to and pass out these things. And for a while there, they said he was the only guy that could get the Beatles back together because he knew him. He knew everybody. You know, it's probably because of his money and because he went to every one of these concerts. And, and pass out these vegetarian flyers. Well, he'd go to Coconut Grove Park, which was a beautiful park in uh, South Miami, and it was right around the corner from Dinner Key Auditorium, where the previous uh, two, two stories ago was from, where Jim Morrison had his little exhibitionist <laughs> uh, performance. Now, uh, so I got to know him, because I'd see him in the park all the time, and I used to go out there, down there and hang out, and I used to do a lot of photographs, and I'd do photo essays on the park and things, and try to sell them to make a few extra bucks. But he couldn't, uh, wasn't allowed on the University of Campus, uh, Miami campus, because he's a very, well, University of Miami campus, very conservative place, very, very conservative place. But I could get him on because I was the head of a group called the Gadflies. Now, nobody knew it, but I was the only one in the group. But that gave me legitimacy to invite any speaker I wanted on the campus, and they had to provide a microphone and a place for him to speak, and yada, yada, yada. So he was complaining because he wanted to get on there, and he wanted to spread his message about vegetarianism. So I said, well, come on. You know, I'll, I'll have you on. I don't care. So he came on, and from that point on, that we'd become uh, somewhat friends. Uh, I'd always see him down there, and he'd, he'd always... Uh, you know he was always friendly and so forth. Well, anyway, so uh, now this is uh, this is where the story gets bizarre. He would go into the in 
to the park and he'd always have his lamb with him and he'd sit there and while he was talking to you in a straight face and everything he'd masturbate the stupid little lamb off and I'd say what the fuck are you doing in a park and he said well but he said the lamb's got a right to a sexual life just like everybody else and it was just made so much sense to him all right so one day he gets arrested for having uh, let's see having livestock in a park well he went to court, and he's like, guy's a millionaire, right? So he goes to court, and he fights it, and he says, no, no, this isn't a livestock judge. This is because it was a misdemeanor. He said, this isn't livestock. He said, because livestock, the definition of livestock is you raise an animal for slaughter to eat. And he said, this is this is my little son, sunshine. He's not going to he's not he's not going to be eaten. He's a pet. So the judge let him off. So he wasn't back there two hours, and the whole time I, I'm in the damn park there. He, he he wasn't back two hours, and the cops come and arrest him again for having a grazing animal in the park. Well, there's no way he could beat that simply because he uh, the damn thing was eating the grass, you know. So then he had to take it back and leave it on his boat. But he still hung out at the park all the time. And then uh, him and others invited me to go to Woodstock, and I had no no concept or no no desire or anything to go to Woodstock because I hate crowds, you know. And uh, so, so we turned the offer down, and off he went to Woodstock, and he was in the movie. But uh, uh, as I said, he knew every group that came to Miami. He, they ended up partying on his on his boat. Now, the previous story about the, the part number one was when he shows up, and of course he's at the Jim Morrison concert, and he's, of course he's on on stage, and he's passing out these flyers, and he throws the. I, I, if you watch part one, you'll remember he uh, the guy star. See that he had a guy dressed up in an outfit that looked like a a, a witch's outfit, as far as I could determine. I mean, he had a. a pointy hat and it had stars all over it and he had a thing that looked like a, a very similar to, to what this thing was but much longer and all it had on was a was a bunch of uh, was was a bunch of uh, uh, of stars all over it all different colors and it was like when you're a little kid and you went to school you, you got a star for being good well that's what he did that was his job was to work for this guy and run around put stars on all these little kids that were in the park on their heads and and pass out these leaflets to their parents about being a vegetarian and then of course he he was on stage with Jim Morrison and then he tossed <laughs> tossed the ream of them out as I explained in the previous concert but what I decided to do, I don't know, and 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 you and you people can filter this out. But I guess uh, what I think are some funny stories uh, from from my life, and uh, uh, maybe I'll do a, a story, uh, uh, one story a week or something. Uh, but it has nothing to do with my silver channel. I should probably start another channel, but I'm too stupid to to know how to do that. But uh, this is just another little entertainment section from from some of my my history and this was the part thanks to uh, plane jet 42 they asked me to to uh, uh, do these little uh, musical associated uh, uh, videos so I want to thank everybody for watching in if you like them give me some thumbs up and the thumbs up outnumber the thumbs down then I'll do some other stories that I, I think you'll find very interesting and very entertaining uh, uh, I got a couple about Timothy Leary and a couple other people that I've run across in in my uh, days. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Yeah.